New videos every day. What would you think if I told you your water supply was contaminated? Well, I have a study from the U.S. Geological Survey in 2002 which states that 80% of the water found in streams, rivers, and lakes were contaminated with prescription drugs, um, antidepressants, hormones, um, you know, hair care products, body care products, just all kind of chemical contaminants. So you're probably thinking, well, how does this happen? Well, someone takes a prescription medication or they use a hair care product and then they take a shower or go to the restroom and that water is sent to a wastewater treatment facility. And the wastewater treatment facilities are not equipped to handle or to filtrate out these types of chemicals. And according to this, it actually says that sewage treatment plants are not equipped to filter out any of the hundreds of different prescription drugs that are present in wastewater. And it's not clear just how they would approach the cost or technology of such a challenge. Now to give you an idea of how a type of drug can make its way into our water supply, in 2001, 61 million prescriptions of antidepressants were issued by uh, medical doctors according to the CDC. Now, antidepressants are not a cure, they cover up symptoms, so people who are taking antidepressants end up taking them for extended periods of time. And then what happens, the person takes the antidepressant, um, they use the restroom because it passes through their system, and then it's sent to the wastewater treatment facility. And the wastewater treatment facility is not able to filter out that substance out of the water. So it just builds up in the environment. Now another example would be the millions of women who are taking birth control pills which contains estrogen. So the women take the birth control pills, the estrogen is processed through the body and then it's eliminated into the water. The water is sent to the wastewater treatment facility and then because they can't filter it, it's sent back out into the environment. So we have a ton of different types of pharmaceuticals that just build up and build up and build up in our lakes and streams. So these drugs are making their way into our lakes and streams. And actually a toxicologist from Baylor University caught some bluegill fish near Dallas and tested them and found Prozac in the brain, liver, and muscle. Now the muscle is what you eat. So if you're fishing for fish in streams and lakes and you're eating these fish, you actually could be eating more than you're expecting. So what effect does this really have on our wildlife? Well, researchers in Colorado have found that male fish are now beginning to develop female sexual organs, and scientists believe that it's a direct result from estrogen in their water supply. Another example is a toxicologist that found low levels of antidepressants, Zoloft, Prozac, Paxil, and Celexa in fish and determined that there were developmental delays in the fish and metamorphosis delays in the frogs as a direct result from these antidepressants in their water supply. Another example is in mosquito fish. They exhibit developmental delays, uh, specifically their sexual maturity delays in both the males and females. Now you've probably heard that antidepressants can cause sexual dysfunction in humans. Well, apparently it causes the same thing in fish. Now you see what these drugs are doing to the wildlife, and this wildlife isn't taking the doses of the prescription drugs, they are just getting the effects in their water supply. Okay, so what's happening to all of us who are taking prescription drugs and we're, you know, taking them every day or for however long that we're prescribed the drug, if it's causing those changes in wildlife, what is it doing to us? Another example is that researchers are now finding evidence of prescription drugs in the blood of bull sharks. And it actually lists the most common drugs found. It says antidepressants such as Prozac and Zoloft, cholesterol reducing drugs like Lipitor and synthetic estrogen are the reportedly the most commonly found drugs in bull sharks in the Florida's rivers. Okay, and also scientists are worried that this is actually going to impact the bull shark's ability to reproduce. Now, if that's not bad enough, I have a report from the BBC News with a big headline of Prozac, 
found in drinking water. So an environmental agency in Great Britain has actually um, determined that because so many people are taking certain types of pharmaceutical drugs, it's building up in the water supply. And actually, um, the gentleman that is speaking in this article, it says, it is alarming that there is no monitoring of levels of Prozac and other pharmacy residues in our drinking water. Now, you've probably heard, if you're going to Mexico, don't drink the water. Well, apparently, if you're going to London, you can't drink the water there either. So I have a report from the BBC News that is entitled, Prozac Found in Drinking Water. So they've actually tested and studied tap water and found traces of Prozac and other pharmaceutical drugs in the drinking water. And actually the environmental spokesperson in the report states that the Prozac in the water table could be potentially toxic and said the drug was a potential concern. Now personally, I find this to be kind of scary stuff. We are consuming so many pharmaceutical drugs that we are actually contaminating and polluting our own environment. If you're interested to find out more about this subject, just Google the words Prozac and fish and it'll pull up all the articles and the articles that we talked about today. So I'm curious to know what you think. Leave your comments and uh, post your video responses and I'll see you next time. Bye.